A jet oxygenation device delivers oxygen at high flow and high pressure and is used to attempt rapid reoxygenation through a small bore cannula. Its goal in our algorithm is not to eliminate CO2 and therefore it's not a ventilation device. These devices are capable of creating flows of 250 mils to 1000 mils per second but at the expense of high airway pressure. In a can't intubate can't oxygenate scenario, when a cannula has been inserted, the Leroy or Rapid O2 device is our preferred jet oxygenation device. An initial 4 second oxygen jet is delivered giving an initial volume of 1000 milliliters. Whilst administering the first jet, signs of flow must be sought by checking for obstruction via feedback from the device and checking for chest movement. It should be noted that the pressure from a standard oxygen flow meter is equivalent to 4,000 centimeters of H2O, which is directly translated to the patient's airway. The large expiratory lumen that the Leroy or the Rapid O2 provides allows pressure release without having to disconnect the Leroy device from the cannula. Following this jet, we would wait for a minimum of 20 seconds for response in saturation. Following this response, we recommend to not jet again until the saturations have dropped by more than 5% from the maximum achieved with the initial jet. The subsequent jet should be of 2 seconds duration, giving approximately 500 milliliters of oxygen. Should there be no saturation response from the initial jet insufflation after 20 seconds, we would then also recommend a subsequent jet of 2 seconds. Please note, a 1 second on, 1 second off jetting technique is not recommended. If this technique though was inadvertently applied, this video demonstrates that the expiratory characteristics of the Leroy or Rapid O2 device could allow for enough pressure release as not to cause significant pressure buildup and burr trauma. In the event of a cannula kink or obstruction, the Leroy or Rapid O2 device allows for tactile feedback, alerting the anaesthetist of an obstruction. By relaxing the grip and straightening out the cannula, patency may be restored and jet oxygenation commenced. Using a three-way tap as a jet oxygenation device with an oxygen flow of 15 liters per minute exposes the patient to uncontrolled high airway pressures. Even with the three-way tap in an open position, the airway pressure can rise to dangerous levels. Using the three-way tap in a closed position, the pressure buildup can be extreme, and we have to advise against using this device for jet oxygenation. The ManuJet is another option capable of creating high oxygen flows but at the expense of high airway pressure. The ManuJet's working pressure may be reduced to one bar before connecting the device to the cannula. At one bar, the ManuJet delivers approximately 250 milliliters per second of oxygen flow, but this estimate is unreliable. During a complete upper airway obstruction scenario, even this lower pressure could lead to a rapid pressure buildup and potential borrowed trauma to the patient's airways. Disconnecting the ManuJet will reduce the intrathoracic pressure, but we have found this to be an unreliable procedure to follow in the crisis situation. We would only recommend using a ManuJet in the situation where you do not achieve a satisfactory response with the Rapid O2 or Leroy device in a patient with an obviously patent expiratory pathway. Care should be taken not to mistakenly unscrew the entire pressure control assembly while attempting to adjust the working pressure through the pressure control dial. 
The menu jet does not provide any form of feedback to the operator in the event of a kinked or blocked cannula.